Next question is from Josh Buckholtz. Should you eat the same amount of calories on a rest day as a workout day? This question we get this question a lot, actually. Yeah. And, you know, the, the the theory or the idea here is like, oh, okay, when I'm training, right, you're lifting really hard and you're exercising, and so the body needs more calories uh, because you're exercising. And on a, on a calorie burn day, right, you would probably burn more calories on a workout day than a rest day. But when you're strength training and you're lifting weights, the recovery process is just as important. So the additional calories that you would eat over what potentially you burn for the day, hopefully gets partitioned over to building muscle. Right. So it really isn't about a day-to-day -day thing. It's more like, and it's not even a week thing, but it's easier to look at a week and say, these are my calories allotted for the week. And it doesn't really matter if it's rest or low day, you can undulate them. You can keep them the same. Right. It, it doesn't Would really you manipulate like your, your macro balance for that on, on recovery days, for instance, like say upping, you know, your protein and, and fat intake versus, you, you know, and then like adding a bit more carbohydrates on days, you're more active. So I would, I would only for behavior reasons, mm -hmm. not yep. for, not for calorie need, protein need and macro need. Yep. I would do it based off of behaviors. Right. So, and that's a really good question. I do manipulate that. Not both though, because I'm going, Oh, I didn't exercise today, so I'm going to go lower carb. It's more like I know when I go lower carb, it suppresses my appetite in comparison to when I'm high carb. So I don't want to be, I don't want to overconsume while I'm also being kind of lazy and sitting around for the day. Mm -hmm. So I might, I might adjust my macros based off of what I know my behaviors are. But when you're talking about the science of what the calories are going to do for your body, whether it's going to put on fat or put on muscle, it doesn't matter that yeah, much. Yeah, this is a, one of those splitting hairs, yes. uh, it doesn't matter uh, conversations. It really doesn't matter. You know you know who this matters for? The high-performing extreme athlete where you want to have an increase of 1% performance on game day, in which case I'd say make sure you have a carbohydrate-rich yeah, meal. Do kind of a carb cycle. Yeah, two hours before type of deal. For everybody else, this is, it doesn't matter. You know how you base your decision on this? Exactly what Adam said, your behaviors. Uh, do you feel like you want to eat less on the days you don't work out? Or do you feel like you want to eat more? Do you find that you overeat? Do you find that some people on the days they don't work out, they find they're less disciplined with their nutrition? In which case you might want to avoid trigger foods. Like Adam said for him was carbohydrates. It's the same for me. Um, so I may want to do something like that. I think you should base, you're, you're going to be far better off basing this decision off your behaviors than you are on mm -hmm performance or yeah, muscle gains. gain or fat loss because it really uh, doesn't make a, a difference at all. For me personally, I tend to, to do better eating less carbs on the days I don't work out, but it's not because I'm not having the carbs to burn for energy or whatever. It's really, it's exactly like what you said, Adam. I, I'll, I'll overeat otherwise. Carbs are trigger foods for me. If I have rice or potatoes or whatever, I'm more likely to keep pushing my calories. And so I, and, and because I'm not working out, I got more time on my hands. It tends to be on the weekend when I'm with the mm -hmm. family. So I'll just avoid those things to try, unless I'm bulking, in which case, uh, then I'll throw them well, in. And, and this a is a classic example of also how I use like, you know, extended periods between a meal, meal timing or, you know, quote unquote, intermittent fasting is I'll go, oh, hey, this is a day I'm not going to train. So normally I would get up and have breakfast by 7 or 8 a.m. Right. I'm not going to eat until noon because I know I'm not going to be training also today. If I start right out the gates eating some carb-rich carb meal, then I'm going to want to eat two hours or three hours later again. And so it's more behavior than it is, oh, I can't eat that because yeah. I'm going to get fat. Overall, here, this is a, I'm gonna, I'll stand by the statement all day long. Overall, for most people, if you were to base your eating, your nutrition, based off your behaviors and how you felt, you'd be far better off than if you based it off of what you read in a study that's the ideal amount of calories, macronutrients, and maximized performance type stuff. Way better off. Yeah. The behavior it's based- much more likely to stick. Though, more likely too. to stick. You're going to be, you're going to get better results long term. You're going to be more consistent. It's going to make you feel better, improve your health better than being so regimented about, oh, oh today's a workout day. Got to increase my carbs. Got to drop this. Got to do that. And again, I can see some benefit when you're at extreme level. You're going to go on stage. You're 3% body fat. You know, an ounce of water under your skin makes a difference. So now you got to make sure everything's perfect or whatever. Or you're a super high level athlete and the difference between you and second place, you know, first and second place is a, you know, a millisecond, in which case you're going to want to time things and make it's going to make a difference. But for everybody else, it makes no difference. In, in, again, the behaviors are what you should focus on when it comes to nutrition.